Hello, Bobcats. This is Mrs. Wilhite. We're in fifth grade math. We're still in chapter one. We are now going to start with chapter one, lesson seven. It is still a fifth grade standard, something you have to learn in fifth grade. Also today, we're going to be looking at comparing decimals. I'm hoping at the end of today's lesson, you'll be able to compare decimals. And why, of course, that question, why do we need to know this, Mrs. Wilhite? Why are we learning this today? Well, one, in school, we have to learn our standards so we're ready for the grades that are coming. But also, you're going to be using decimals with money. We have to be able to compare purchases. We have to be able to see if something costs more, costs less. Also, the value of something. Is the value that something has worth it? You know, if you were to divide in the ounces inside something with the total amount you were given, is the price of each ounce, is the amount you're paying for each ounce really worth it? So again, we're going to compare decimals, which has to do with value. And we need to know how to do this in real life with purchases and with things that we are deciding whether or not to spend our valuable money on. Now, before we get into comparing decimals today, I want you to think about what do you already know about place value? From my experience, I know that place value represents the worth or the value of a number. So if we look at the first eight that's written, that's in the ones place or eight $1 bills. As we move further to the right, the value gets 10 times smaller. So eight tenths is 80 cents or 10 times smaller than $8. I also know that as we continue to move right, it's getting smaller and smaller. Eight pennies, eight cents, is smaller than 80 cents. It's 10 times smaller. And finally, eight thousandths is 10 times smaller than eight hundredths. I also know that when we compare numbers, we use symbols. We say greater than if the first value is greater than the second value. We use less than if the first value is less than the second value. And finally, the last symbol that we often use when comparing is the equal sign. The equal meaning that whatever's on the left is the same value or worth the same as the value on the right. So the position of a digit in a number relates to its value, and I know that the place value chart helps me figure out that value, helps me figure out what's bigger and what is smaller. All right, the steps today. Step one, use a number line or line of the decimals. There's two strategies that we can use. We can use that number line or line up the decimal. Step two, we're gonna compare the greatest place value first. And finally, after we compare, we can solve. We can decide, is the value greater than, less than, or equal? And we don't want to move on until, of course, we think, is it reasonable? Does it make sense? Does the value prove to be greater than, less than, or equal to? So one, number line or line up those decimals. Two, compare, starting with that greatest value, the number on the left. Three, solve, compare the values, figure out what's less than or greater than. Finally, is it reasonable? Does it make sense? Hey, problem one, math in my world. Luis downloaded two songs onto his MP3 player. Which song is longer? So I see a question mark and I always underline that question. I have to answer it, which one is longer? Step one, we can use a number line like the one that's listed here. We can see that 3.6 or 36 tenths, three and six tenths, is less than 38 tenths or three and eight tenths. We can also use the strategy of lining up the decimals like they did here in this table or chart. And we can clearly see that 8 tenths is larger than 6 tenths. So once we have lined up the decimals, used a number line, we can compare. We compared to say that 38 tenths is bigger, has a higher value. Step three, we can solve. Since 38 tenths is to the right of 36 tenths, 38 tenths is greater than 36 tenths. It makes sense, it's reasonable, because 
eight is larger than six, so I know I have the right answer. All right, example two, math in my world. Write less than, greater than, or equal to in the circle below to make a true sentence. Eight and 69 hundredths and eight and six tenths. Those are the two values they would like me to compare. Well, step one, I can line up the decimal. I don't have to line up the decimal, it's an option. I can also use a number line. If I line up the decimal, then I can go ahead and fill with zero, or it says here to annex a zero so that they have the same number of digits. Step two, after I line up the decimal, compare, starting with the greatest value. Well, eight ones is the same value, six tenths, same value. So now I can clearly see nine hundredths is bigger or larger than zero hundredths. So I know that eight and sixty-nine hundredths is a greater value. It's greater than eighty-six tenths. I know it's reasonable because nine hundredths is more than having no hundredths. I have the correct answer. Okay, moving into guided practice, plot each decimal on a number line. Write less than, greater than, or equal in each circle to make a true sentence. Well, five tenths, they put a little dot here on the number line. Seven tenths is here. Anything that's on the right is going to be a larger value. So I know that seven tenths is greater than five tenths. Or you can think of it as five tenths is less than seven tenths. Okay, I know that I have the correct answer. I know that it's reasonable because seven tenths is larger, is bigger than five tenths, right? It's actually two tenths bigger. I can go ahead and move on. Okay, problem two. I have four and forty hundredths and four and forty-four hundredths. They've placed it on the number line for me. I can see that four and forty-four hundredths is larger. It's greater than. And the reason why I concluded the answer is four and forty hundredths is less than four and forty-four hundredths is because four over a hundred or four hundredths is bigger than zero hundredths or that four in the hundredths place is larger than the zero. And plus on the number line, that value that's four and 44 hundredths is further on the right. And anything that's on the right is gonna have that larger value. I can move on. I'm gonna use a number line to solve problems three, four, and five. I wanna make sure that I plot those points on my number line, looking for which value is on the right. 44 tenths or 4 and 4 tenths goes here. 41 tenths is less than 44 tenths. 37 hundredths is here on the number line. 39 hundredths is here. Well, I can see 39 hundredths is a greater value because it's on the right. 57 hundredths or 65 hundredths. Well, 65 hundredths is definitely larger. It's way down that number line. It's way on the right. I surmise the answers to be, I should put an S here, it's more than one, and I can put a little arrow. Okay, and I know this is reasonable because of place value. Remember, the value of the digit is larger if it's on the right of the number line. So I know I have the right answers. Okay, problem number six in independent practice, less than, greater than, or equal. Make it true. Well, this time I wanna line up the decimal because step one says I can use a number line or I can line up the decimal. So if I line up the decimal and I make sure it's right on top of the other one, I can compare. If I put a zero here, that makes it a little better because it has the same number of digits. I'm gonna start with the greatest place value, right? Step two, start over here. Two in the ones place is the same value. One is the same tenths, five hundredths is the same. Oh, and I actually have a five in that first number. Oops, I don't know why I put a zero there, I'm so silly. Actually, no, it is a zero, okay? And so I can clearly see that these numbers are the same. They're the exact same numbers. Okay, if I add a zero here as a placeholder, it has the same value and it looks the exact same. I un the, uh, understand the answer to be equal. This is reasonable because both numbers have the same value. 
Okay, I'm still in independent practice. I'm going to compare, and I'm going to choose to line up the decimals. I could choose a number line, but I'm going to go ahead and line up those decimals. I'm going to fill with zeros so they have the same number of digits. I'm going to look at the greatest place value for step two. I can see here that we have one-tenth, and one-tenth is larger than zero-tenths. So one-tenth is the greater value. It's bigger than six thousandths. Okay, if I move on to problem number eight, I'm going to choose to line up the decimal, step one, making sure that decimal is right underneath. They have the same number of digits, so I don't have to fill with zeros. I'm going to move to step two, compare using that greatest place value. Well, here's the difference in the hundredths place. Five hundredths is bigger than four hundredths. So I know that 652 thousandths is greater than 647 thousandths. I understand the answers to be, I'll put my little arrows because I have the two answers. I know that they are reasonable because of place value. Again, if you start at the greatest place value on the left and work your way towards the right, you can find which value is greater than or less than the other to compare. Okay, independent practice 9 and 10, again, less than, greater than, or equal. We're comparing decimals today. I'm going to go ahead and do step one, which is line up that decimal. I can see I need one more zero here as a filler. I'm going to move to step two. Greatest place values ones. They have the same value. I see a difference. Nine hundredths is larger than no hundredths or zero hundredths. So nine hundredths is greater than one thousandth. Okay, moving on to problem number 10. I'm going to line up that decimal. You could use a number line. Either one is permitted. I definitely have to add two zeros. Oh, actually, no. I only need one zero, but I'm going to move that one over. It's so important to keep yourself organized. You can see why I just showed you. Now that I have it lined up, I can go ahead and start in the greatest place value. Seven is the same. Three tenths is the same. I have found a difference. One hundredth is larger than zero hundredths. So seven and thirty-one hundredths is greater than seven and three hundred four thousandths. I understand the answers to be, put my little arrow. This is reasonable because nine hundredths is greater than or bigger than zero hundredths, right, for problem number nine. Okay, and now if I'm going to justify or tell if it's reasonable for number 10, well, again, I know that one over a hundred or one out of a hundred is greater than zero out of a hundred. Remember, you have to start on the left and work your way over to find the value that's larger. Okay, I'm going to skip ahead to problem solving. We're on problem 18. Explain to a friend, how many times greater is 46 than 46 hundredths? Explain it to a classmate. All right, well, step one, I'm going to line up the decimal because I think that's the easiest way for me to explain it. I'm going to put a four in the tens place because I have four tens or 40 and then a six in the ones place. That represents the value of 46. Okay, and then I have to compare that to 46 hundredths. Well, if I put a little decimal here and I put a four in the tenths place and a six in the hundredths, I have lined up the decimal. Now I can go ahead and fill with zeros and then I would explain to my friend that four tens or four $10 bills is larger than having no $10 bills. 46 cents is four dimes and six pennies. $46 is dealing with four tens and six ones. So I established the answer is $46 is greater than 46 cents and how many times greater? Well, remember, every time you move on the place value chart, every time that you shift, change, or go to the left, it's 10 times bigger. Well, the four, it started off 
in the tenths place here. So if the four is moving here, that's 10 times bigger. And if it moves one more place, it's actually 100 times bigger. So the question says, how many times greater is it? Well, I would say 46 is greater than 46 cents. This is reasonable because 46 as a whole number is a hundred times larger. Okay, and if I showed them that place value chart and showed how you move to the left twice, so 10 times 10, two times, it would be a hundred times bigger. I know I have the right answer because I use that place value chart to help me. All right, Bobcats, it's that time. What did you learn today? In summary, today I learned about comparing decimals. I learned that you can line up the decimal and start at the greatest place value and compare. Compare that greatest place value, then move to the next place value. Something else I learned today is you could use a number line figuring out which value is on the right of the number line because that is the greatest value. Which values on the left of the number line will be the smallest value. I also learned that you need to be able to work with decimals so that you can compare the prices of things so you can figure out if something is worth your money. So I hope that today you are able to compare decimals either with number lines or with that lining up the decimal. Thanks for your attention.